I'm Matt Bichard in Seattle for NARIT's 2018 ESG Forum. Joining me today is Kevin Hagen, Director of Corporate Responsibility with Iron Mountain. Kevin, thanks so much for joining us again. Thanks for having me, man. Now, I want to talk today about the importance of collaboration in trying to solve some of the ESG issues that companies face. To start, is it possible for a real estate company to have a successful long-term ESG platform without collaboration with tenants and vendors? I think collaboration is a, a crux issue for sustainability in REITs as well as other organizations. What I think the data shows is that collaboration is a skill or a competency that we as individuals need to gain because we're not always that great at it and that the organization needs to gain. I think what's really um, interesting about the sustainability space is that it calls us to think a little bit differently about how we interact. Sustainability is across the organization because when, as Amory Lovin says, when you optimize a piece of the system, you pessimize the system. So when we think about the crossways of the organization, it means we have to be multilingual and multicultural, if you will, because you have to be able to uh, negotiate across the organization and speak with folks in finance and engineering and marketing and treasury, all different functions, and they each have their own sort of subculture. So we have to learn how to be culturally agile and talk across the organization as individuals first, and then secondly, to get the organization to be able to do that organically and be able to make that a natural progress. I think those kinds of internal collaboration tools are crucial to finding sustainable system solutions. And it's always those system solutions that are more innovative, more exciting, and deliver a lot more value to the business. And what about collaboration with government or regulatory agencies? How can real estate companies leverage those relationships? How do you take those internal skills of collaboration and focus them outward, outside of our walls? So many times systems problems can't be solved inside of an organization. We have to engage others to the process. I think businesses are historically pretty good at supply chain conversations. If we're a vendor and a supplier, we kind of know how to talk to each other. We have a power relationship. We know what's going on. I do what you tell me to do. That's how it works. That's a kind of collaboration, but maybe not the full story. So I think supply chains can collaborate in new ways and think about environmental social governance solutions in great ways and get a lot done. But there's one more step, as you bring out, it's what I call hyper-collaboration. How do you go a horizontal and engage organizations that don't have historical power relationships? We're not doing business with each other, but I still need to talk to an environmental NGO, a government agency, a peer organization, uh, another REIT. How do we collaborate with them? Because what we're finding, whether it's you know, the Gates Foundation or, the, or Walmart or Amazon, you're not big enough to solve big problems. So we have to collaborate together to solve systemic challenges so that we all gain and the whole business solution is better. By putting these pieces together across uh, types of organizations and these hyper-collaborative groups, we get this great opportunity to get so much more accomplished. But it takes a different set of skills. We have to learn those languages. We have to be culturally agile amongst organizations. Now, picking up on that, um, the peer-to-peer -peer relationship, you know, typically public companies are, are hesitant to collaborate with their other peers for fear of giving away what they perceive as a competitive advantage. But, you know, like you mentioned, events like this ESG forum and others, you know, REITs really seem to be pooling their sort of shared experiences to, to address some of these concerns. Why do you think that is in this space, and, and how is it helping move the needle? It's kind of fun. Early when companies just begin thinking about corporate responsibility, environmental social governance, it's not that important. Let everybody talk to each other, who cares? Then we progress up the curve a little bit and all of a sudden we start to actually deliver some, some advantages and the business starts to actually gain some traction, deliver some measurable results, get that first press release, get that first uh, paycheck, and all of a sudden it's, oh, this is too important to share. We have to, we, we can't, we can't do that. This is, this is too important. It's fun, that's the next step. That's a, that's a sign of progress. It's a, it's a great sign. But you know, there's one step beyond that. I think what organizations learn next is that whatever that tactical success was, that first lead certified building, that first recycled whatever, 
was a tactical success and it was great that you were first, but it was quickly copied by others. Because if you did it right, of course anybody can do it. Right? So the challenge wasn't in did we get the first certified building, the challenge was the machine that made it possible to make the first certified building. So the competitive advantage is definitely there in the ESG space, unquestionably. It makes businesses better. But it's not because we got that first press release or because of that tactical success. It's because we figured out the machine that makes this innovation happen consistently and forever. So when we get to that stage, then we recognize real quickly, collaboration makes those tactical wins faster, cheaper, better. We can do a lot more of it and we can multiply the advantages in many big ways. But that doesn't erode our competitive advantage because our competitive advantage was the machine that was able to do it in the first place. So it's the organizational competencies that become the advantage, not the tactical successes. The tactical successes become the artifacts, the, the proof that it's working. Now, we've talked about collaboration among a lot of different types of organizations. Are there any other groups or, or, or types of organizations that we haven't addressed that real estate companies would, would benefit from exploring further collaboration with? You know, collaboration outside of our walls is so important. Certainly other businesses and other organizations become quick, quickly uh, the candidates for that engagement. Now they have to be willing, you can't drag them into it, but I think the, um, the types of organizations we've had success engaging with include the NGO community. There are a number of in organizations like Environmental Defense, World Wildlife Fund. Uh, I think REBA, the Renewable Energy Buyers Alliance, is a great example of corporations coming together, hosted by NGOs, working with academia, and government agencies all pull together to help move the industry and provide the incentive for utilities to really think about how to green our grid. I think it's a great example of this type of hyper collaboration that enables us to get a lot done fast and at much bigger scale than any organization can do by themselves. And lastly, I'm asking folks here at the ESG Forum to, to brag a little bit. Is there one particular ESG-related statistic or goal or development that, that you're particularly proud of at Ironman? This year we had a couple of really great successes that I'm proud of. And not to mention that we probably have some opportunity left undone. So we're still on a big path to success. Plenty of things going on. But one of the things that I thought on the S side, the social indicator side, was that we scored a perfect 100 on Human Rights Campaign Equity Index. I think that's a great indicator that we're thinking about our employees and our, and our employment brand and who we are as an organization and getting a little external ratification that some of that's true. Not to, again, not to say that we're, not, we're done, but um, it's nice to have a little ratification that we're making some progress. On the environmental side, Boy, we achieved a pretty big milestone this year in the renewable energy space. Uh, up from, in 2015, we were less than 1% of our electricity footprint from renewable energy. Last year, in 2017, I think we're going to probably, when the numbers are all crunched, we're going to be someplace north of 40% of our total electricity consumption came from new renewables. And we saved, we think, millions of dollars in the process, and we're able to stabilize our rates for our customers and ourselves for the long haul. So I think that was a, a great example of, of something that changed, something we're doing different that enabled us to, to make some progress, deliver some d clear bottom line results, um, deliver some environmental social benefits, and I think uh, help support the cause that environmental social governance is making our business better. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. For more on ESG related issues, be sure to visit Nary's website, REIT.com.